covered the men's 100 meter in the previous video, but the best rivalry in the sprint world right now is between the young prodigy Arian Knighton, who you can see in the black shorts on the right side of the screen, and the defending world champion Noah Lyles in the 200 meters. The race at the US trials a few weeks ago, uh, this is the race, so I'll let it play once and then I'll chime in after. Okay, so just watch lanes 4 and 5 on the track, those are the two competitors that I was talking about earlier. So as we saw, Lyles ran him down during the straightaway and showcased his top speed. Now I'm going to give you my analysis on what happened. Um, as a side note, Matthew Bowling is in this race. He's the so-called Caucasian man, second from the left. He's gotten to be very overrated over the last few years. He ended up getting sixth and he didn't have any power at all. He didn't go under 20 seconds. He's turned 22 years old and he hasn't reached the levels of someone like an oblique Seville in Jamaica or even an Aryan Knight in this race who's four years younger than him but is outclassing him by far. But if you look at the social media followings of Matthew Bowling compared to someone like Arian Knighton or Oblique Seville, it's not even close. And I hope track fans and track people are starting to realize that he is not what everyone cracks him up to be. I don't think he's fast enough to run the Open 2, even though he ran a 19.9 a few months ago. In this day and age, anyone who's decently fast can run under 20 seconds of the 200 one time. It's about what can you do after rounds of the championship, and clearly he's shown he's not ready to make a U.S. team. I don't see Matthew Bowling ever making a U.S. team, neither the 100 or the 200. That's not to digress from the main point of the video, it's about Lyles and Knighton. So as we saw, Lyles ran him down during the straightaway and showcased his top speed. I've been critical of Noah Lyles before because I don't think he's a good 60 meter runner at all, or even a 100 meter runner. He ran 9.86 one time three years ago, and since then he's been hyped up way too much. He struggles to break 10 seconds most of the time, and has never come close to making an Olympic or world team representing the USA. That being said, he's great in the 200 meters. His performance at the Olympics last year where he got the bronze with a time of 19.7 was a very poor performance considering right after that, I think it was like two weeks later or a month later, he ran 19.52 which is way faster than 19.7 and that time easily would have won him the race at the Olympics if he had just ran that or even close to that he would have beaten uh, everyone else in the field. So I wasn't very impressed with that especially since going into the Tokyo Olympics he was on record in an interview saying that he was going to win three 200 meter titles in the world in a row and that he was going to break the world record at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, he didn't come close to either of those things, but at least he got a medal. He's not like a Safa Powell in 2008, but to lose to both Kung Fu Kenny and Andre de Grasse was pretty embarrassing. Now on to Knighton. His first 140, 150 meters in this race were incredible. I mean, when he came off that turn, he had a huge gap on the rest of the grown men in the field, even though they have muscles developed that he doesn't quite have yet. As you can see, he has a relatively skinny, lean frame, especially because he's an 18-year-old. The last 50 meters is where he looked to be breaking his form a little bit. His knee ash wasn't there no more. And combined with the fact that Lyles was tryharding to catch an 18 year old when you already have the bye, Arian just wasn't ready to handle that. So you can see what I mean at this point in the race, just coming off the turn into the halfway point. Len has about three steps on Lyles at this point in the race, coming into the second part of the 200 meters. But Noah Lyles has a Carl Lewis type strategy where he just cruises for the first 120 and then starts to turn it on after that. And that's what happened in the rest of this race. So even though he has three steps on him, Knighton just could not close over a sprinter like Noah. At this point in the race, we're about 40 meters out. If you look on the far left of the screen, Kung Fu Kenny is his nickname. His name is Kenny Benarek, but that's his nickname. He looks like he's in contention to get a top three finish, but I guess Fred Curley, third from the left, just ran him down. But um, Lyles is still a couple steps behind, but he's gaining a little bit. And you see Matthew Bowling starting to fall into the background there. This is exactly what I'm talking about, man. Like this... How is, how is Matthew Bowling ever going to make a team? Let's go play hockey or something, bro. And here's the end of the race. It looks like Curly just passed uh, Kung Fu Kenny at the end. It's hard to see from this angle, but Lyles is flexing on Knighton right now. Curly got third with 19.8. I think he was a bit tired from his runs in the 100 meter, which I covered already in the last video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'm sensing it's going to be a 2004 Justin Gatlin year for him. He can get the gold in the 100, but he's likely going to have to settle for bronze in the 200 because the two guys leading this pack are just on another level right now. For me personally, if Curly gets a bronze medal in this event, it'll be a great accomplishment for him because I don't expect him to do anything else. If you're running 19.7, 19.8 and you're getting bronze, there's no there's no shame in that. That's as fast as any bronze medalist has ever been. So, um, Curly, he should focus on the 100 and then try to just get a medal, be on the podium at all in the 200. That's what I would say. If you notice at the end, it's hard to see from this angle, but Noah Lyles is flexing on Arian Knighton. I can't imagine being a guy in his mid-20s in his prime 
trying to flex on someone who runs for your own country as well, who's 18 years old. To me, it shows a lot of insecurity, and it shows that Lyles knows that Knighton is next up, and that this is probably Lyles' last year to actually beat Knighton at the championships. I think the next couple of years is going to be tight between these two, but after that, it's not even going to be close. Knighton will, will take the throne as the best 200-meter sprinter in the world. So at this point in the video, I'm going to be going over who I think uh, has a chance at winning the world championships. My pick to win is Noah Lyles. Um, I think he's in his mid-20s, he's in his prime. He is the more experienced sprinter between him and Arian Knighton in the field. People looked at Arian Knighton's fast time where he ran 19.49, which made him the fourth fastest person ever in the event, and they expect him to replicate that at the world championships. It's very unlikely he's going to be able to do that. This is, that was the beginning of the season. This is more near the end of the season or the middle of the season. So you can't expect an 18-year-old to perfectly replicate a performance like that after multiple rounds at a championship. You just can't. It's not realistic. So I think Lyles' body is more refined and it's more ready to handle those types of rounds. Is the stamina to keep going through them. Um, I'm expecting Noah Lyles is going to win this World Championship 200 meter and become the fastest man in the world again in the 200. He's going to win with a time of like a 19.58 around there. Um, I'm not expecting a PR from him, but I do think he can run a season's best. But it's not a guaranteed win for him. Uh, the next two guys can both easily challenge for gold as well. It's just he is the favorite and he is my pick to win. My pick for silver is Arian Knighton. I did some research and found that the youngest global medalist in the 200 meter in the modern era of sprinting, which is considered to have started in 1983, which was the advent of the World Championships and fully automatic timing uh, and fully electronic timing was in effect at that point. The youngest medalist since then was only 19 years old. The youngest gold medalist was a 21 year old. So if Knighton is able to get a medal, which he is expected to by track people, he will be the new youngest medalist in the modern era. Um, the likelihood of him winning gold, though, I would say is pretty low. He would be three years younger than any person who has ever done it. However, there's never been a sprinter that was as fast as he is at this age. He is the fastest young sprinter of all time, even faster than Usain Bolt at the same age. age. So, so if, if there was, was ever a young, young sprinter, sprinter who could, could win, win the gold, gold as a teenager, it would be him. But because of historical precedent, I'm picking him to get silver, not gold. I, I think he's going to run a time of about, I'd say, 19.65 around there. Which would be a great time, by the way. Even though he's ran 1949 already, 1965 would be an, be an improvement after his performances at the trials. And it would show that he's running as fast as a gold medalist should be running. It's just there happens to be somebody running faster than him this year in Noah Lyles. Those times are assuming the wind is normal, by the way. Um, those are the time ranges I'm thinking. 1958 for Lyles and 1965 for Knighton. And last but not least, I have Fred Curley taking the bronze. Um, I think Fred Curley... He's somebody who, after the 100 meters, is going to be very gassed. Even though he has good stamina from his 400 meter days, uh, there's only so much you can do, especially if he hopes to run a 9.6 seconds uh, 100 meter or a nice a low 9.7. If he's going to be PRing, running some crazy time in the 100, it's unlikely he's going to come into the 200 and beat these specialist guys like Lyles and Knighton. But I still have him getting bronze, and there's two people who will be competing with him for bronze, I'd say. Here's one of them. His name is Andre DeGrasse, if you don't know him. He is the reigning Olympic champion in the 200 meters. He won last year with a time of 19.6. He's had a bad season so far. I don't think he's ran under 10 or under 20 seconds in either event. Uh, he allegedly had the coronavirus recently, so he could not make his national trials. I think he's still going to be a factor. You can never count out the Olympic champion. But this year, I don't think he's going to have the explosive performance that he had last year. So I have him getting fourth place right now. But he, he could challenge Fred Curley or maybe Knighton if Knighton decides to sell. Um, he could challenge either of them for a medal. As of right now, I have him getting fourth with a time of, I'd say, if he's in 19.8 second shape, he can, he can be fourth and challenge for a medal. And the last one is Kenny Bednarek, a.k.a. Kung Fu Kenny. He got silver in the Olympics last year. Um, he hasn't had the best season, but he turned it around a little bit at the trials. He ran 998, I'm pretty sure, in the 100 final, and he got like seventh. But in the 200 final, he qualified with like a 1987, I want to say, behind Fred Curley. So I think he did as much as he needed to do at trials to prove that he's still in race shape. He's still running fast times. So I definitely think he can, he's going to get fifth. My pick for him is fifth, but I definitely think he's somebody who can challenge for a medal. If Curley's too gassed and Andre's not in great form, he could easily come and snag up the bronze medal. Before I get off here, there's a new guy who just, I think his name is Mena. He just ran like a 19.6 a week ago. I don't think he's going to be a factor. I won't call him a fraud yet because we haven't seen much of him, but I don't think he's a factor, mainly because he ran that time at altitude. If you didn't know in sprinting, if you run a race at altitude, not at sea level, you can get faster times, times that you're not capable of running in regular races. 
If you want proof of that, look at Calvin Smith in the 1980s. He was able to run the world record in the 100 meters and then never came close to that again. You could look at Ferdinand Omanyala who ran 977 last year and he's not a 97 runner. I think we all know that. So uh, altitude races are cool, but they should be their own category. You can't really compare altitude races to non-altitude races. So he ran that time at altitude prior to that race. He had never ran a time under 20 seconds in the 200. So I think he's just somebody who happened to run a fast time and it happened to be a race at altitude. And that's what's giving him the hype right now. I don't think Mena will even make the final. If he does make the final, he'll probably get 6th or 7th place, which would still be respectable, but don't expect sub-20s from this guy at the, at the World Championships. Anyways, the main point is, Knighton is the future. He is a prodigy, he's a wonderkin, and I have him uh, firmly in the top two right now, maybe one this year. We'll see, I have him silver, but he, you know, you never know. He almost won trials. If Knighton can upset Lyles this year, not only would that discredit Lyles as a dominant 200 meter sprinter, losing to a teenager, but it would also set up the start of a 200 meter career for Arian Knighton that might be able to compare it to Usain Bolt because Usain Bolt did not win his first title in the 200 until he was about 21 turning 22 in 2008. He got the silver medal in 2007 at the age of 2021, 20, but that's still older than Knighton is right now by a couple of years. So if he's able to even get a medal, even if Knighton gets a bronze medal with a time of 19.8, 19.9, that would still be amazing for him. Nobody has ever gotten a medal at that age, so regardless if he's on the podium, it's great. Even if he just makes the final, I don't have expectations for him to win. But knowing him, he's probably going to get the silver or maybe even the gold. And that's going to set him up to be one of the greatest sprinters of all time. The real Usain Bolt comparison is Arian Knighton, not Matthew Bowling, okay? Stop with the foolishness about Matthew Bowling. Get on the Arian Knighton hype train. He's up next for real. Possibly a monarch child as well. Allegedly.